Hey everyone, Shelby Eileen here, and myself, and my friend Ned. I was a mortician before all of this, so of course I have an anatomically correct skeleton and flashcards just hanging around. I'm going to be talking today about how to keep your neck safe during sexual experiences. If it's um, done improperly, choking or breath play can actually cause permanent damage and death, and we don't want that. If it's done properly, it can cause much more intense orgasms and releases endorphins that make everything more intense. So let's go through it. One of the most important things that I can tell you about starting breath play or getting into all of that is you need your partner's consent. If you don't let them know that you're planning on choking them, it can be absolutely terrifying. And they may or may not like it, or they may be curious and absolutely love it. <laughs> I also recommend having a safe word and a safe motion. If you're being choked, you can't always get a safe word out. So always have a backup as a safe motion. My personals are the word potato is my safe word because even if I can't get words out, potato, you can still see how it comes out of my mouth. It's, it's unmistakable. And I do use a triple tap system. So if something's going wrong, I can inform my partner that things aren't okay and they can stop. So hand choking. You've probably seen it a lot in movies of someone coming up and grabbing someone by the neck. Don't do that. That's how to cause damage. So I'm going to have Ned here. Turn to the side for me, dear. <laughs> so it is kind of surprising, but the most important parts of keeping you alive are right in here. So you can see your hyoid bone here and you can actually feel that. That's that hard little bit right up the top. <laughs> and inside of the hyoid bone between your spine and the hyoid is both your trachea or your windpipe and your esophagus which is you know where you swallow food from both of them can be damaged if you choke your par partner improperly so what not to do do not put any pressure on the trachea if you can feel the ribs you can feel the hard bit right here don't touch that. It's not going to be good for anyone. Your partner could start coughing, choking, and could have damage. What you're going to want to do is take your thumb and your finger, one or two, it doesn't matter, and you're going to feel around here. So you have your muscles, and then there's a little indent, and then there's the, the trachea. So you're going to find that little indent, and you can even move up and feel a little bit where the lymph nodes are, and you give a good squeeze there. And that just a little bit of pressure goes a long way to creating an amazing breath play experience. My personal recommendation, um, if you are looking to give a woman a more intense orgasm using breath play, is hold it there until the moment that she is orgasming. At that moment, when she orgasms, pull off and that influx of oxygen into the system releases more endorphins and makes things far more intense. If you let off too early, it can be a bit disappointing. So read your partner, communicate with your partner. You'll get there. It's fantastic. <laughs> so another thing that could potentially cause damage to your neck is collars. Now you can use them to look cute and you can use them for BDSM or bondage, and you can use them for pet play. If you're using them for pulling, I don't recommend a snap button one because you're pull it and it's just gonna pop right off. It's not fun. So, I'm gonna show you this is my nice one, leather one with D rings, so I can either be pulled to the left or to the right or in the center. And I'm gonna show you what not to do and what to do with collars while I am getting this thing on, letting you know that this video is sponsored by Adam and Eve. If you go on their website, if you want a collar and you use code Shelby at checkout, you will get 50% off of almost any item, plus free shipping in the US and Canada. Cool, I got this on. I like this one because it has essentially a belt buckle in the back. Ha, <sighs> collars. 
Sometimes you want to leash someone up and have them walk around the house on all fours. If you're gonna do that, best advice, pull away from the trachea. You can pull up, you can go straight ahead and drag them around, make them your little pet, or you can pull their head down onto something that you want their mouth on. <laughs> what not to do, and I'm gonna demonstrate this, but please don't do this at home. Do not pull back. You can already hear how much my voice is straining from this because it puts pressure on the trachea. It can collapse it. It can damage that. It can damage your esophagus and you'll have a very unhappy partner. <clears throat> Communicate and stay fun with it. Something important, please do not practice any sort of breath play by yourself. That being done without anyone there to help you can cause autoerotic asphyxiation death, which I think most of us have heard of, but it seems like an absolutely horrible way to go. That's when people misjudge, they can't get out of the situation. Always have a partner with you. Ah, <sighs> now I think I've covered everything and I'm a little... I'm good, I do enjoy being choked. <laughs> If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Or if you have any ideas for future videos, I would love to teach you about whatever I can. Uh, again, if you go on adamandeve.com, you wanna get yourself some nice, awesome collars, use code SHELBY at checkout, 50% off plus free shipping, and stay tuned for the next video here at Sex Ed with Shelby Elaine. Take care. <laughs>